hey, mm-hmm. is perfectionism getting in the way of you making money with your business? Is it? Well, this episode is for you. Oh, maybe I need to speak more like this. No, it's fine. Hot Sound School presents Content Heavy. The podcast that helps online business owners make better content and more money. Let's Hefe up. Hello and welcome to the Content Hefe podcast, better content, more money. I'm Veronica. And I'm Studio Steve. And we are the Pod Sound School. And we have quite the episode for you. We are going to be talking about perfectionism and how it may be getting in the way of you making money and of you growing your business. And we're going to be covering very, very good stuff. So I hope you're ready. So I'm going to lead this episode uh-huh. uh, because I did my research and I planned for this episode. Yes. And this is the reason why I put this episode together. Um, we have struggled with perfectionism. Yeah, we I still think, struggle with it. I think there's a lot of people out there, a lot of creators, a lot of online business owners who struggle with perfectionism and is costing them money and is robbing them from learning and growing opportunities, making them feel stuck, setting impossible standards for themselves and for their businesses and for for their teams too, and getting in the way of productivity and robbing you from joy and enjoying what you do. Yeah, it's causing unnecessary stress. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's counterproductive sometimes to bring in money into the bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a really important thing to get into check. Yes. And in this episode, we're going to attempt to help you overcome your own perfectionism. Yes, because we're in the process of it. Yes, we're in the process (laughs) ourselves. Uh, Like we uh, mentioned, we are working on letting go. Perfectionism Mm -hmm. is one of those things that we have struggled with. I don't know where it's coming from. I think when we started our business, it was coming from uh, the feeling of not being good enough. Yeah, like inadequacy. Inadequacy. Not having enough authority. mm -hmm, Or comparing yourself with other uh, people in the industry. Yeah, definitely. So it makes you get stuck in certain tasks Mm -hmm. and certain things. Yeah. And I know. I know that you've been spending way too much time on that Canva design (laughs) because you're a perfectionist. Yes. And and I've been there. And you've been taking way too long to get the fourth revision of your website just launched already. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. And one of the things that we have been through is uh, perfectionism when it comes to our offers, perfectionism when it comes to our our courses. Our Digital products and our our coaching program. You know, the reality is that your audience, your clients, Mm -hmm. they don't care about perfectionism. They don't care about you um, delivering perfect stuff or delivering perfect results. What they care about is that their problems are solved, that their needs are met. Mm -hmm. And they understand that you're human. We're all human. Yeah. And it's just unattainable. So stop. Stop what? The perfectionism. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, I thought I was looking at you funny or, or like doing something I wasn't supposed so, to do. So here is the plan for this episode. Step one. Yes. We're going to recognize if perfectionism is affecting your day to day and the types of perfectionism that, that you may be suffering from. Okay. There's and different types there's of perfectionism. There's different types of perfectionism Ooh, according to my research. I like this. And step two, the steps that you can take to let go of perfectionism, we have a plan for you to get rid of that mm-hmm. nasty trait. So hang around <laughs> because in two simple, amazing steps, you're going to be on your way to overcoming perfectionism. Yes. Well, let's start with step one. Let's do it. Okay. So are you a perfectionist? Let's find out. Do you have the tendency to be a perfectionist? There was a study conducted by Gordon Flett and Paul Hewitt. I hope I am pronouncing those names. Sounds pretty good to me. Um, And they are well-respected researchers in the field of psychology. And the study was published in 2006. And it's called the Positive versus Negative Perfectionism in Psychopathology. Ooh, okay. So according to this study, perfectionism is a complex construct that consists of multiple dimensions including self-oriented, other-oriented, and socially prescribed perfectionism. Okay, so self-oriented. Other-oriented yeah. and socially prescribed perfectionism. Cool. So okay. uh, let's define those three, and I'll give you examples of those. Okay. 
So let's start with self-oriented perfectionism. And the definition for this one is high standards or expectations one sets for oneself, often accompanied by a strong motivation to achieve those standards. So an example of this is meticulously designed your website or Instagram bio or spending too much time creating content, changing it and refining it, affecting their output and growth. Okay. So spending too much time on all of these things, which mm -hmm. means you spend less time on more things. Yes. And uh, there's a lot of people who have uh, come to us with that predicament. Yes. You know, there was somebody who reached out to us saying that they have recorded a number of podcast episodes. Yeah, and that they, they already have like 60 podcast like 60 episodes. 60 podcast episodes. Just in draft just mode. Just sitting there. They're in draft mode. Uh-huh. How did they get exactly? I mean, that's perfectionism, That's right? perfectionism yeah. getting in the way. The other type of perfectionism is other oriented perfectionism. And the definition for this is high standards and expectations one sets for others, which can lead to unrealistic demands and potentially strained relationships. Okay. Examples of this are expecting your team to deliver work that meets exceedingly high standards that you set. Uh, overly critical and damaging uh, the morale of your team sometimes mm -hmm. and driving away talented members of the team because of this high expectations that nobody can meet and you require imperfectionism every step of the way. Okay. So that's one of, that's the, the second category. The other oriented. The other oriented. The socially prescribed perfectionism, the definition for this is that the perception that others have high standards and if expectations of for oneself often uh, resulting in a constant sense of pressure to meet this perceived expectations. And these are the constant pressure to keep up with competition, with mm -hmm. the competitors. Uh, they believe that clients expect the perfect results and perfect user experience. Mm -hmm. uh, they believe that their audience expect them to make outstanding content all the time. It can lead to excessive stress and ultimately burnout. Interesting. So do you have any of these three or all of them combined? I think I sort of have all of them combined. And if it, I've had all of them before, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think what you mentioned when you're first beginning, it's really easy to get these when you're first getting into content creation. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about here is perfectionism as it relates to content marketing, content creation, mm -hmm. and overall like product development yeah. for our businesses, right? Mm -hmm. Small business owners, especially, I think are the ones who really suffer from this. Yeah. Now I have a question for you because yeah. uh, when I was doing my research, I uh, found myself reflecting on the idea of where do you draw the line between having high standards and just uh, wanting to put good quality uh, content and good quality products out there and being a perfectionist? Yeah, see, because I, I think well, like, the, uh, there could be a where, strong. Where do you draw the line? There could be a strong argument against this that mm -hmm. you know to really push for the highest amount of quality and standards is going to set you apart in the industry. And there's this is kind of the age old controversy when it comes to content creation between like quality versus quantity. And the higher the quality, the fewer pieces of content that you're going to be able to produce. Mm -hmm. So it's really about just striking a balance for every unique situation, I would think. Uh, but I still think that it's okay to have a little bit of perfectionism. And I know that that um, they call it both positive and negative perfectionism in the study. So I think mm -hmm. to a certain degree, if you're a perfectionist, that can be a good thing. And to have those high standards and those high, to want to have high standards for quality. I think mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Yeah. Also, if you find yourself with a tendency of not letting go, of mm -hmm. lingering way too much on a project, of being super picky or being like really hard on yourself, mm -hmm. I think something that you've said before is that sometimes you spend hours on that Canva design. Here comes again. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you post it on your social media and you get two likes. Yeah, exactly. So... When it comes to content, when it comes to creating offers, sometimes you just have to let go of whatever it is that is making you just to hang on that particular piece of content or yeah. offer and just throw it to the universe and see what happens, see how people respond. Mm -hmm. I think the key is to observe your energy when you're approaching anything in your business or mm -hmm. in your creative efforts. 
if your energy is coming from a place of stress, then you're likely on the negative side of perfectionism. But if it's coming from a place of fun and curiosity and creativity and those good feelings or those elated emotions, then it's okay to like take some extra time to be detail oriented, you know? And you think about like really perfectionist film directors, for example, mm -hmm. I think of Wes Anderson. He like goes and interrupts the set design people and paints his own sets and stuff, mm -hmm. which is totally overstepping the boundaries of what a director ought to do. But that's part of what gives his films that like aesthetic and that specific look. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how difficult he is to work with. And I don't know if it's hurting the rapport of the whole crew. And if people keep coming back and working with them, I know that he works with regulars all the time. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, I took too long going off on that, that example. But that's what I mean. That's what I think is the best is to observe your energy when you're approaching the content that yeah, you're Yeah, I think that that's a, a great way to put it. Mm -hmm. And also to add a little bit to that is that, you know, the feelings that you have when you are caught up in that moment. Because mm -hmm. I think perfectionism is egocentric. Yeah. And that wanting to put a good product, a good offer, a good piece of content that is going to help your audience is, is audience centric is audience client -centric, centric which is really cool and i so think in that, that in that way then it's justifiable that you're like you are taking the time because you want to provide a good experience, experience. so those little mm -hmm. details those little touches is part of providing the is good it experience. Is it because of you or is it because you yeah, because want your audience to have a good experience exactly now you know i think about just when you get an apple phone in the case or an Apple computer in the case and like the packaging of that, there's a lot of perfectionism involved mm -hmm. in that manufacturing of that compared to when you get another electronic device in a case, it doesn't have that same suction feeling and like the perfectly, like the cardboard is different, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. everything about it. It's like this different, it's like you're opening up opportunity uh, yeah. you know? and you're opening up access to a special club, uh, the new you. Yeah. And so there's, you know, in the details of like a Louis Vuitton purse mm -hmm. versus something that's made a little more, you know, and that kind of has to do with, I think your offers in that way too. Like if your offers are going to be really high ticket offers, then just by the product alone might need to have more detail. Mm -hmm. Um, but I love the example you gave of when it comes to content, you really don't know until you get the content mm -hmm. out there. And as frustrating as it is, you'll put, you'll go into a studio, professional studio, where you have a team of people helping you, multiple cameras and lighting and makeup and wardrobe and everything. And those videos will get a hundred views. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go and sit in your car with your phone mm -hmm. and talk about something. And that video goes viral mm -hmm. and does more for you and generates more leads for you. And actually, you know, so it's, it's, what are you being a perfectionist about? And I love that you're saying audience centric. And I think that's going to transition us really well into, into step number two, step number two and step of number two. overcoming your own perfectionism. Yeah, so what are some of the best practices or steps or things that we have tried ourselves and that we've seen people in our industry also try to get rid of perfectionism? Hey, I'm interrupting the episode for a little announcement. You know you have to create content to attract more prospects online, but the whole thing seems daunting and too much to figure it out on your own. Which social media platform should I choose? Should I start making videos for IG Reels, TikTok, or YouTube? What skills do I need to learn? What equipment do I need? Or maybe you're considering starting a podcast for your business. And if any of that's the case, we want to invite you to sign up for the waitlist for Smart and Simple Podcast. Podcasting. It's our first coaching program where we, the Pad Sound School, will be teaching you how to create and launch a professional podcast from scratch. Content marketing, so your content is a lead generation machine for your business and different ways to maximize every time you record so you can create micro pieces of content that will go on different social media platforms. We'll be holding your hand through the whole process, meeting weekly with you, making sure that you're not getting left behind. We'll be teaching students and clients about podcast and video production and marketing for four years. Our approach to teaching is straightforward, innovative, and fun. So hurry up and go to podcastingsmart.com slash waitlist to sign up or find the link in the description of this episode. Stop working so hard on your content. Make your content work for you. Now back to the episode. So the first one is to change your focus change to getting it done instead of getting it perfect. 
And for this, it, it will be a good idea for you to set deadlines and the timelines to finish your task and your projects. Oh, yes. Uh, we have been implementing the MITs. The most important task. The most task. important task. And like give yourself mm -hmm. two hours, three hours, depending on the project to get that task done. Or, you know, a and day, that, two days. Yeah. But uh, needs to be a deadline for that. And th that MIT is also, everyone has their version of that MIT. There's also the golden hour you hear people c call it in prospecting and different things like that where, and it makes sense because that's how the brain works. You're going to mm -hmm. be able to hyper focus on something for a few hours every day. So that should be your window of time. Mine is in the morning. Yeah. Mine's you later in the afternoon, whenever it is, you know, when your golden hour is. And so on that golden hour, there should be a do not disturb sign on your door and you should be focusing on one specific task. But this is getting into productivity, mm -hmm. but I think also it works to help with perfectionism. As yes. Well. Another thing that we have done and that you could do is to change your approach. Like we were saying that every piece of content is market research. So don't get too attached to that Canva design. <laughs> <laughs> She's really hung up Let on the Canva go. design. Ooh. I've been there. You're I've attached there. to it, obviously. Listen, I love Canva. She still can't let it go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love Canva, but I mm -hmm. spend way too much time in one design. Mm -hmm. it's, it's ridiculous. So just have that in mind that every video that you make that every podcast episode that you make that every blog post that, that you put on your website all of that is for you to gather research about your audience mm -hmm. that's it I don't it. get too hung up on that's the veronica technique it's it's market research yeah she says that for everything it's market yeah research. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah because we, we we have made some questionable that, whatever you have to come videos. up whatever you have to come up with to allow yourself to hit publish it's fine the way it is it really is and i know you can think about this in any creative endeavor like if you're painting a painting i know myself with different creative activities that i've dabbled in that i ruin the project mm -hmm. beyond repair you know, and if you just leave something what your crazy perfectionist mind thinks is unfinished, if you leave it unfinished, then it's at its perfect state. Mm -hmm. And there is a moment in any creative project where you will cross that threshold into sort of overdoing it and adding too many bells and whistles and trimming away at the sculpture too much. Mm -hmm. You want to leave some of that original raw idea in there yeah. so that the raw energy that inspired the idea to begin with comes through. And supporting this point to the change your approach is that to find a balance between volume and quality. Yeah. And you hear people like Gary Vee. I mean, Gary is so detached from his content. And, and from he, the quality of his from content. From the quality of his content. What he cares about is, is his message. Yeah. Is how many pieces of content he can make in one day or one trip or whatever it yeah. is. He has like a team of people like following him around, making videos of him just ranting uh, when he's about to cross the street yeah. or when he goes gets his coffee. Which is cool because it's its own strategy. And mm -hmm. you can sort of juxtapose or, or compare to him Marie Forleo, which mm -hmm. I love because they've both been in the game of content creation for years. And so they're, and they're both kind of supporting s similar businesses in a way, but they couldn't be different from each other in terms of production. Marie Forleo really cares about being in a studio and being in a nice wardrobe and mm -hmm. a nice new outfit with every every new episode. And so it does have to do with your style and what makes you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. If you need to deck out your backdrop and you need to get the most professional cameras so that you feel more comfortable, um, and I'm talking about myself, then, <laughs> then that's what you need to do, right? And then the other thing uh, that it's an important uh, point for this is the proof of concept. Mm -hmm. And this is when you start testing your audience with uh, a little something. When you go to Costco, and they give you a taste of, uh, 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 of the, the samples. Mm -hmm. And then you go home and you're already full. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the proof of concept. So every time you're creating something, just have that in mind. I'm just uh, sending this into my ethers. social media, into the ethers, uh, to see how my audience responds to this particular offer or piece of content yes and then based on that then you build the whole thing then exactly and also that's a really smart way of choosing what pieces of organic content perform well to then use your high performers to run ads mm -hmm. on yeah and so it's perfect market research so you could do somewhere you don't wear makeup 
you could do some pieces of content where you're doing your makeup in the mirror. And then you could do some pieces of content where you are in a decked out studio. Maybe you could rent a local studio in town or mm -hmm. something, right? And then you have these like, you use sort of control uh, elements that you can experiment with. Mm -hmm. Does my audience like it when I'm wearing fully decked out makeup and I have three different cameras or do they prefer it to just be like on my phone for the most part? And then you'll get feedback from your audience and you'll learn what they want. Yeah. Which hopefully is bringing us to the next that's point. That's awesome. Yeah. So our next point, we already talked about it a little bit, and that's be uh, client or audience centric uh -huh. and ask yourself, does my client needs this perfect or does she or he need it done? Yeah. Uh, does my audience need this message more than a perfect video or a perfect podcast episode or a perfect blog article? Mm, I like Can that I deliver lot. the same results faster? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Am I able to des deliver these results faster? Can I, how do I have to deliver this so that I can get it done within the allotted time frame that I've given myself? And does my audience really need all this? Mm -hmm. What do they really need? What do they really need? And I mm -hmm. think that I love you hit it on the head. The big takeaways for me from what we've discussed is to pay attention to the way that you're feeling. If you're stressed, and then also pay attention to your perspective. If your perspective is me, 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 mm -hmm. you're really worried about yourself, then in, your, in this egocentric kind of place, then that's a sign that you are in a state of perfectionism. Of perfectionism, yeah, and you have to let go. But if you become audience-centric and you're thinking they, 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 what do they need? How can I make more value for them? I need to get more of this out so I can reach more of them. Mm -hmm. Then you're in a good place where you can utilize those overly thinking or obsessive tendencies you have in and those can be your superpower instead of something that's holding you back yeah and the last point is to train and let go and this is for people who like us manage teams mm -hmm. and, and that's just to train your your talent to train your team and just let them go and let them be and allow them to surprise you with their talents and their points of view and their new ideas yeah, we've been practicing this with uh, our team, and it's been so delightful to see how talented they yeah, are. Yeah, it's amazing, and how wonderful, and how it's just so great to gain more perspective. Mm -hmm. And in terms of being a other-oriented perfectionist, that can be really harmful for yourself in an egocentric way. That can be harmful because you're missing out on what's so great about collaboration mm -hmm. to begin with. Yeah, which is gaining more perspective seeing the world from a different set of eyes. Mm -hmm. And if you try to control those that you work with too much, then you're going to lose that perspective. And that's so valuable yeah. in business. And something that we're learning is to work as a company, to work on our mission and mm -hmm. to work on our values and our goals and expectations. Yes. And you can do that too. And you can communicate that to your team. Communicate what your expectations are. Build mandates and principles for the culture of how your company ought to work mm -hmm. for what your belief systems are and do a check with everyone on your team to see if everybody's on the same page. Many times, most people on in a team, just they're after different goals or they don't even know the main three goals that the company's after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just my advice to you, save your energy for bigger things and uh -huh. let go of perfectionism. And, and let uh, us know how you're doing with perfectionism. <laughs> Which of these three do you identify with the most? Mm -hmm. Did you know there was three different types of perfectionism? Self-oriented perfectionism, other-oriented perfectionism, or socially prescribed perfectionism. Let us know which one in the comments right where you're listening or watching this episode. This is a video and audio podcast. If you didn't know, you can find it on Spotify and YouTube in video format and in audio format on the other big podcast players. So subscribe, follow, and share this episode with a fellow online business owner, content creator, or a perfectionist in your a perfectionist in your life. A, oh. a perfectionist <laughs> in your life so they can get over it once and for all and start living. Yeah, start living. La vida loca. <laughs> Reduce that stress. Increase the output. Attract more money into your bank account. Yes. And until next time. And until next time. Hasta, hasta la vista, vista jefe. jefe.